Welcome to It Matters. Hadley does matter, right? <laughs> no, we have a live audience today. This is absolutely wonderful and a first, and I thank you all. And uh, this is a by the way, but for the stranger sitting over there looking like the sailor, that is my cousin Nancy from Cincinnati. And she's here for moral support. <laughs> but more importantly even than Nancy's presence here today, we're going to be introducing Jessica. And I have practiced her last name at least four times on the way here. And she's going to tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Watts, Spank Navel. <laughs> Spank Navel. And you might recognize it from our last Hadley Matters when we interviewed her husband, Mike, the fire chief. Jane says, and I believe it's true, that this whole Hadley Matters interviewing is a work in progress. So today we're doing a little bit different than we've done for the first half dozen or so, which is why you all sitting here have a list of job responsibilities that Jessica has. I, in my preliminary chats with her, was so overwhelmed by the complexity of her job, the number of balls she has to keep in the air, and I kept getting lost. So we decided that we would share these with you. Jessica will talk about them today, but we want you to input with questions or something you want to follow more deeply. And I would appreciate your doing that. Jessica, welcome to Hadley Matters. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Are you a Hadley girl? I mean, is this a long-term thing for you? Uh, Hadley is officially my home. I did not grow up here. Um, I grew up a few towns over, so I will always be an implant, even though my <laughs> entire family has been in Hadley for generations. And what family is it? Uh, the Nabala family. The Nabala family. Yes, my grandmother was the oldest daughter of the 13. Oh, okay. And then you married a man. I did. And ended up here. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Spank the bell, yes. Let's talk a little bit about town clerk, about the why you are a town clerk. Who was here before you? How long uh, have you been here? Those okay. things. Okay, I was first elected in 2007. Yes and it's an elected position. I'm actually the last full-time elected employee in Hadley. Um, everyone else is part-time or appointed. Oh, really? I did not know that. Thank so, you. Um, which I'm fortunate to be elected. Um, uh, the reason why I ran was because Joanna was finally retiring. And Joanna is? Divine. Divine. Divine was mm -hmm. retiring. And I'm actually the fifth town clerk in the town for the past 100 years. So the people in this position kind of stay in this position. Mm -hmm. Even though it is an elected position, I don't see it as a political position, mm -hmm. um, where the institutional knowledge that you have over the years is not something that you want turnover with. So you don't want to replace a town clerk every three years. Most of you can attest, I know, know that the first few years in my office, all I did was read. Read, 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 read. There's no course, do I understand correctly? There's no education for a town clerk that you could go... Not to become one. Okay. Once you are one, they have classes and all of that. Oh. But I did a lot of research um, when I ran. Mm -hmm. I went to visit other communities to learn a little bit about the job. I was fortunate to have Joanna for a few days after she passed her torch to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it was a learn by doing. How long did that take you? <laughs> a couple of years. 20 years? Oh, no, a couple of years. I remember the first time I went into my file cabinet and I pulled out a file and I knew exactly what it was. And I was, it was like epiphany. It's like, oh my God, it, it's clicking. <laughs> and how long have you been in the job when that happened? Uh, at least two years. At least two years. Wow. And you well, I felt comfortable. I okay. felt like really comfortable. Well, one of the things we talked about, and I think Jane said that you were information central. Is that a fair description of your job? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people assume that. I have a, okay. So the way I view my office is a big dresser with about 100 drawers in it. They're small drawers, but I have to know what's in every single drawer. And every drawer is another department with the town that I interact with. Mm -hmm. And most people assume automatically any questions go to the clerk. And if I don't know the answer, I can tell you where to find the answer. 
Is there any department in town that you don't, with whom you don't interact? I mean, I basically interact with everyone based just on posting the meetings mm -hmm. to that small extent. Mm -hmm. So I'm connected to everyone in some way. That's the least, yep. Yep. though, that you would be doing. Yep. Let's turn to your duties. Okay? Okay. Okay. We'll put this together. You forgot her family. Pardon me? You forgot her family. I was coming back to it. Thank you. <laughs> I thought we were going to get lost in your duties forever. Oh, no, I was going to come back at that at the end, but now that you bring it up, Jane, we'll do it right now. We were a little disturbed that Michael gave so much attention to your son. And as a women, we were a little annoyed with him. Which I find very comical because my daughter has my husband wrapped around her in little pinkies. <laughs> it's not even funny. Um, but yes, I'm very proud of my daughter. She um, and my son also got the Brett Oakley Award yes. for volunteering this year, which, you know, very proud. And Rosalie um, is sitting right over there, <laughs> Oakley. <laughs> so I was very proud of uh, both my kids. Uh, my daughter's going to be a senior this year, um, graduate from the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. Mm -hmm. So she speaks fluent Mandarin. Um, I mean, as a mother, my daughter is a vocal without being pushy. She's smart, but she has common sense. Wow. Um, and she's easy on the eyes. <laughs> but again, I'm biased. Yeah, good. <laughs> and I, I love my boy too, though. I was going to say, anything that Mike didn't cover about your son? son. I was trying to remember his name. That Gage. Was the, Gage. Gage. I was starting think to of say a shotgun, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll think of a shotgun. Because people think it's Gabe or something like oh, that, so I just yeah. think of a shotgun. But. And your daughter's name is? Sloan. Sloan. You did not pick common names. No, did their you? names are not written on any pencils or stickers. <laughs> they never get free ice cream. <laughs> Poor children. Okay. That good, Jane? Thank you. Happy, happy. Okay. Then let us go to her duties. You all have them there in front of you. And if there's anything further, she'll talk about each duty. But if there's anything further you want to know about it, this is okay, interrupt time to ask questions, okay? So let's start with the top one, which is your whole vital yes. records. I know that when my mom died over at Elaine Manor, and I needed her death certificate, my understanding is that that was you. Correct. So what are vital records? So vital records are basically your birth, your marriage, and your death records. Okay. So it's kind of funny. It's not a lot in between. I often joke, you know, someone who lived in Hadley, who was born in Northampton, lived in Hadley for 60 years. Yep. And then, you know, dies in Northampton, Hadley will have no record, <laughs> even though they've been there. <laughs> even though so, that's yeah. where they've lived their lives. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody needs a birth, marriage, or death certificate, and you were born here? The only, so for births and deaths, both the occurrence community and the resident community has a copy. Okay. The same is not true for marriages. In marriages, it's where you file your intentions, not where you get married. Oh, I get people calling me up. I was married at the Holy Redeemer. Where's my record? You didn't file your intentions here. You might have filed your intentions in Wilbraham oh. or, you know, South Hadley. So okay. that's the only tricky one okay. is the marriage. Okay. Thank you. All right. You set up, record, and certify elections and town meetings. And you certify orders for borrowing, organizing, general zoning, bylaws. I'm lost already, Jessica, you know. I look at that and I go, what in the heck do you do, girl? Well, I think the biggest, I mean, all of my responsibilities, I think, are all equally important, but the biggest one is probably our town meeting. Okay. I mean, all, the big hump of our government is determined by the votes at town meeting. Um, all of our borrowing articles, all the certifications. I mean, I'm the connection to the state to report all of these. Okay. So I think that's a really, second to our, obviously, elections mm -hmm. is the most important of my job. Okay. Do you help set all that up? We have to organize. Yes. We have to yes, organize yes, it. Yes. And I had the foresight to uh, appoint my, one of my assistants here as, what, what's your title, Pat? Election coordinator? Election coordinator. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and would you introduce Pat? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Patricia Coombs. She's been in my office since, what, 2008? Yep. And how much time does she spend with you? I get 10 hours a week from her. Is there anybody else you get some time from? I get 10 hours from um, Janice Kangas, who is officially the assistant clerk 
who, if I'm away or on vacation, she is able to sign things in my stead. Okay. So mm -hmm. you have 10 hours of somebody who can sub for you. Correct. Basically. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions you all on elections and town meetings and bylaws and all that? Elections were crazy this year, so <laughs> I mean, it, it was absolutely insane with all the election law changes uh -huh. so quickly. It was just, it was crazy. But we so I have a question. How has the, the senior center served you as a public polling place compared to Hopkins? I look like a genius by making the change before COVID hit, because there is no way in heck the school would have had the elections in their buildings. So the fact because that of COVID. Because of COVID. So, and I actually did this change here because it was a new building um, mm -hmm. and it would allow everyone in town to use it because mm -hmm. people think COA is just for the older folks. No, this is for everybody. Um, and there wouldn't be any conflicts with the school, parking issues, kids in session, having extra police officers there while the kids were in school. So I think it worked out perfect and I'm thrilled and everyone who's come through here is just so impressed with this building and we couldn't be more happy. Thank you to many folks for that, yes, but one yes. sitting right over here, I know. Um, okay. Thanks, Drew. That's a good question. I appreciate that. Um, the annual census. Yes. Tell us about the annual oh, the why, census. Why do we have to do this, Jessica? <laughs> well, people get confused because we have our town census and then we have the federal census. Okay. The federal census happens every 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Okay, and they're the ones that you want to respond to because if you don't respond to them, they will literally be knocking on your door Oh. for that. Um, okay. And so people think, well, I respond to the federal census. I don't need to respond to the town census. That's not the case. The federal census does not share their information with us, even though we're required to share our information with them. And it's not that we're being nosy with the census. Um, based on our population, it determines how much state aid we get. Um, you'd be surprised how many times people need to have proof of residency for certain issues, mm -hmm. as well as when the time comes that we might have to re-precinct, which means adding an additional precinct in Hadley. Right now, we're fortunate we only have one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but once the population gets over 6,000 people, we're going to have to re-precinct. So it depends then, on the population. Correct. And your current population is just about 5,100. So if you get 900 more people in here, you're... Yep. You'll be two, correct. six. Okay, correct. But again, we're a town that has five thousand people in it, with fifty thousand people coming through at any time. So we are a very unique town. Because of Route Nine, because is that of what the you're commercial talking base, about? Correct. Yeah, the five college area, the huge commercial base we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of that brings people. Oh yeah, and it puts you know stress and on our resources. I mean, our police department, our fire department, they aren't serving a town of five thousand. Mm -hmm. They're serving a town at 50 at any given point. So. Yes. Good. Okay. And you create and manage records. Are those the records that you create and manage different from the vital records? Vital records is a huge chunk of it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about the other records that I would create. I would be, you know, for certs of no appeal for planning and zoning. Okay. You know, things like that. Certs or certificates? Certificates, I'm sorry. Certificates. No, that's all right. I, I learned a lot from you. <laughs> okay. And that section, anybody want to know more things? You're just taking it all in. Are your eyes rolling yet? Some, I felt like a slot machine talking to her. <laughs> Those little cherries just kept rolling around. Okay. Uh, public record requests. You input them and disseminate oh, yes. them. Yes, yes. Is that people coming in and asking you for public records, like they marriage are certificates? It's supposed to be written requests at oh, this okay. point. There has been a great change in public records laws. Okay. Because, um, again, they don't really take into account verbal requests. Oh. So I am considered the RSO, you know, the one that everyone goes to with their request, and then I disseminate it to the other departments. Okay. So if somebody has a request for, you know, a planning board. Mm -hmm. Then they submit it to me, I submit it to the planning board, and let them know to CC me on the response mm -hmm. so we can guarantee that they were responded to in a timely manner. So a request would be that you want the planning board to consider X? I, I want a copy of the planning board minutes from the state. Okay, but the person making the request is asking the planning board for some sort of response? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Uh, the open meeting? Postings? Where do you post? Uh, our website. 
just on the website or do you I also manually? have a copy in my office okay. I mean when I first started back in the good old days of 07 before we had the website they would be posted right outside the door of my office okay. so unless you came into town hall nobody really knew when the meetings were mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I think putting it on the website where I understand some people don't have a computer I get that but the majority of the people it serves well mm -hmm. I got a nice little uh, silver-haired bunch here. I'm wondering how many of us use the town website, go to it on your computers. That's a question for the audience, Jessica. I actually just had a phone call um, yesterday about someone that was saying that they didn't find the website easily navigatable. Okay. But if you actually look at other towns' websites, ours is, I mean, if there's a learning curve with everything that you do. So once you get on there and navigate around, I mean, you'll notice on my page, there'll be, the same things in different spots mm -hmm. based on how somebody thinks where the information should be. Yes. So it's always a work in progress, but if you ever have a question or you can't find anything or a suggestion for me to make it easier for you, mm -hmm. I have to call me. Mm -hmm. Just can't find that, so it doesn't make any sense. Okay. How many of you use the website? Joan, Betty, Betty, okay. About half of us. And the only thing I want people to know is that on the, t the main webpage where it has the meetings, that's just a PDF of what is submitted to me, but the select board on their page has a board docs link. Now on that board docs link on the left hand side of the page, first one on the top, if you click on that, their agendas will be much more detailed with all the attachments um, that's not available on my posting. So I want people to be aware of that. So your posting is kind of a summary or synopsis. It's a picture, I but if it doesn't want... have attachments. Okay, yep. but if you want the whole thing, go to for the select board. Select so board. Okay. And that would be true with any other committee that's meeting as well then? I'm not sure if other committees use board docs. Okay. I'm just doing the select board as the one that people are most interested in their meetings. <laughs> Only for good reason, right? <laughs> um, so you didn't talk about posting in the newspaper and what the difference is between your posting online of meetings and the newspaper. Oh, you're talking about public hearings. public hearings? Yes, I do not post public hearings. Those are the individual departments that do that. I know planning has to do that for um, town meeting, for the bylaws, for the zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. no. I know conservation has to do that whenever they're holding a public hearing, um, but that is done by them. So that's a separate beast. <laughs> gotcha. Not in, not in one of my tours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jane? All right. Business certifications. Yeah, business certificates. Okay, people are always a little confused about this. If you are a sole proprietor or a partnership, okay. you are probably not on file with the state. You know, corporations and limited liability companies are, are. licensed with the state. Okay. So smaller businesses, sole props, and partnerships aren't. So if the public needs to get in touch with you, they have no recourse. I remember years ago, down by a stop and shop, there was a gym, mm -hmm. and one day a customer went in, paid for a full year's membership, mm -hmm. went the next day and the doors were locked and they closed. So what does that person do if they're not licensed or on file? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other beast itself, and I could delve into it because a lot of corporations don't do business under their incorporated name, okay. therefore they're still required to have a business certificate. Okay. Does that mean that Every business operating here in Hadley has a certificate? Absolutely not. Okay. What would make it so you don't have to have a certificate? If you are incorporated. Okay. Doing business in your true incorporated name. Okay. Or doing business in your full name. Like Jessica Spank Nabel. Boy, am I glad you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fortunate that we don't have a chamber, kind of like Amherst does. Oh. So my kind of list of businesses is my Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce? Yes, yes, Chamber of Commerce, okay. I'm sorry. No. Um, so I, we don't have, a lot of businesses aren't aware that they're supposed to get one. I always have them go to our building department first to mm -hmm. make sure that before I give them a certificate that they are supposed to be there, they're allowed to be there. They're not doing a hope of occupancy where you know 50 cars are gonna be in the driveway okay. on a side street mm -hmm. type of thing, but it's important. Oh yeah, I'm hearing. Oh, uh, you maintain the street list. Other people know it as the nosy books. We all <laughs> love our nosy books, don't we? <laughs> um, and it, it, I always encourage you, if you want the nosy books earlier, encourage all your neighbors to return the census. 
because that's where the information is collected from. Obviously, uh, children under 17 aren't in the nosy books, and the census is a um, is not a public record. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yes. But and also, this is a good time for me to say, after the 15 years I've been here, this is the first year that we are actually paying more for the street list than what we're selling them for. So I decided this year to keep it at the $10. Mm -hmm. But next year, I don't want people to get sticker shock. But there is going to be a slight increase. Obviously, it's not a money maker. We don't make money on these books. Mm -hmm. It's more of a kind of a break evener for the town. So next year, if it's twelve bucks, you know, I apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you take it off their taxes. Not my office. <laughs> I know that. Not, not, not your business, right? <laughs> okay. So you have elections in the town, and people who are running have to file campaign finance reports, and that's another of your jobs. Yes, if they spend money. Ah. If you don't expend any money at all, which some candidates don't, then they sign off on a three-page reporting schedule okay. that they do not spend any money. If you do spend money, there are three reporting periods that you're supposed to report how much was spent and where. Those reports are posted on the town website for everybody to look at. Mm, okay. So if you decide to look at our town website and you want to go through, you'll see the past couple of years of people that are on there, what they submitted. And what they've what they, and what paid they spent. And, yep. Okay. And do you have different kinds of fees and um, files, planning, zoning decisions? Talk to me about that because I'm lost. Oh, the planning, the, the fees. fees. The fees for planning and zoning are not my fees. I collect the fees for them. Oh, okay. Like if there's a subdivision or something, it's like a $375 fee. Okay. You know, things like that. As far as my office is concerned, the biggest things are for the fees for all vital records, they're $10 per certified copy. Mm hmm. Um, you know, marriage intentions are $25, mm -hmm. you know, okay. for that. Yeah. But I do collect money from a lot of other departments mm -hmm. as a convenience. I collect the firearm permits for the police station. I collect the burial permit fees for the Board of Health. I collect the planning board and zoning board fees. Do you all so, see why we had to do it this way? <laughs> Amanda's girl is just all over the world of handling. Well, I'm I mean, sorry. So, no, I just feel, I mean, because you see this one page, and it, that's just kind of like a highlight, and I could get so more detailed. I'm just trying to yeah, make it as simple as possible. So you understand what she does, but the breadth of it is phenomenal to me. And we come to elected and municipal employee management. Do you have a Bible to swear in, people? That is frowned upon nowadays, unfortunately. What is it? Yes. Oh, um, a lot of my oaths um, no longer have, you know, so help you God at the end because it offends some people. No comment, keep um, going. <laughs> <laughs> so I give oaths for all elect, uh, elected and appointed uh, committees and departments. And what's the oath? What do you do? you solemnly <laughs> swear to faithfully and impartially to perform all the duties imposed upon you as member of the X for the term of X in accordance with the bylaws of Hadley and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I love it. <laughs> okay. Uh, disseminates open meeting laws, public record laws, ethics, information. Okay, so a lot of people who are appointed or town employees, um, once they get sworn in, every year you have to sign off on a one-year ethics, oh. that you're aware of all the information that you're supposed to read. Oh, okay. There's also a mandatory two-year online state test that all employees are required to take. Really? Yes. What is the content of the state test? It's just um, like... What are, what are they testing me for when I take ethics. that test? Ethics. <laughs> <laughs> How do you test for ethics? It's saying, you know, if the, if the member of the school committee is running again, can they use their school copier uh -huh. to make flyers? Okay. So they're you know, practical things questions. Like that, yeah. Like that. Neat. I like it. <laughs> and okay. it's, uh, that's really tricky because a lot of the terms don't coincide, and we have you know new people starting, mm -hmm. some people leaving. So I am now working with HR to try to streamline the whole process, because every December I send out a reminder to all the department heads saying, okay, hey guys, this is due. Mm -hmm. This is the, I'm going to give you a sheet of paper. You know, if you can have your employee sign off on that, that'll satisfy the one year and just send me the certificates for the two-year exam that you're given. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, there's a lot of employees in the town, <laughs> I, yeah. a lot. We were talking about this. Some of you work here as volunteers, and 
we just got a notice that we have to, Marlene, help me out here. We have to. Conflict of interest yep. training. We have to have conflict of interest training. Even though we're on the desk for four hours, Betty, do you have to do it in healthy bones? So, regardless of whether you're an employee paid or whether you're a volunteer doing something, you have to take this con. You want to explain this? That's a two year, and that's, that's a state requirement. That's a state mandate, not mine. Um, I'm obviously not the enforcing officer in a lot of this, mm -hmm. um, but it's always good just to have it done so nothing can come back at you. Understood. Um, I always recommend to people if there is even a hint of a conflict of interest, just sign off on one of those disclosures mm -hmm. and say my cousin's brother's friend, you know, <laughs> yes. is working with this company that I'm making a decision on. Yes. And Got that's it. why if you do the disclosure, all the look of impropriety is done. And okay. It's transparent. So disclose. Yes. Be yes. transparent. Yes. You say good. And Does don't it take any money? Mm -hmm. And don't take gifts over fifty dollars. Forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> Get your checkbooks out, friends. <laughs> We're ready. Uh, I guess I thought of that because you have this compliance certificate. I don't, does that somehow relate to same this, thing. what we're talking It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Let us then move on to legal. Again, I'm just more Watch those eyes. She's got great eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Say legal Stop. because she... Re <laughs> oh, shucks. She relates to uh, the lawsuits and things that uh, are brought against the town, any claims, right? Correct. And what's your role in that? Uh, just, I certify that I received it. Okay. And then I file it. Well, that's it's, great. It's, <laughs> I mean, honest, some of these things that seem so simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're very important parts of the process. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, um, you filed a conflict of interest. We just talked about mm -hmm. that, thank you. I've forgotten I put it on her, <laughs> or you had. And our bond certifications, mm -hmm. uh, but that's for bonded employees. That's not the bond rating for the town. I have Is that right? hand in both drawers with that one. Okay. Yep. So I have a copy of anyone in town who's bonded, which is basically you know, our collector, treasurer, all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm bonded to a certain amount. But then um, when we have to get bonds for our borrowing articles and all that is when I have to attest to a lot of the select board signatures, mm -hmm. um, certify copies of what happened at town meeting, in order for us to actually gain access to those funds. Wow, okay. <laughs> what I mentioned, uh, Hadley has a bond rating. Yes. Are you, are you in any way involved in that? I'm and on the periphery of it. Again, I just supply the information to the treasurer okay. to submit to get that rating. How many bonded employees does Hadley have? Do you know, roughly? I mean, do we have 10 or do we have 100? No, no. no. Oh. Half dozen. Half dozen? Yeah. Okay. The ones that, you know, work with the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And finally, our list of and also's. You didn't have enough to do with the rest of it, so. Um, underground storage tanks. Ah, flammable fluids, yes. For flammable fluids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would that be like a business, like a gas station that's gone out of business? Obviously, it's a gas station. A lot of farms have the underground diesel oh. tanks. The Walmarts and Targets that have the aerosols and the paints, okay, and things like that. Yeah. Um, so the registration is generated by the fire department, approved by the select board, and then I issue the yearly registrations for them. Mm -hmm. Now the registrations are not given to the person; they're given to the property. So if you have it at your property at one and you move, that doesn't follow you. The license stays with the it's property. It's with the property, correct. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who might not even have the tanks anymore keep the license mm -hmm. just in case in the just future they're going to do it so they don't have to do the whole process all over again. So uh, do you have a conflict of interest with Mike because uh, the fire department's doing this? I'm a special municipal employee. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a whole other channel. <laughs> you go, girl. Uh, lottery and raffle permits. Yep. What yep. kind of uh, organizations in Hadley would be You'd be surprised. Um, you know, I the Mother's be. Club, the PTO, um, a lot of the um, the clubs mm -hmm. and things like the people that want to have like wine tastings and raffles and all of that, they're required. The state wants their piece of every pie they can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like we have the art shows here when we mm -hmm. hang anew and uh, we do we come to you to get a, a license so we can Correct. serve wine? No, not for that, but if you're going to have oh. some sort of um, auction okay, or raffle or something where the prize was a certain amount, mm -hmm. you have to 
submit that to the state. Just meant and it's not a big deal if you get a yearly license. It's for 10 bucks. It allows you to have any amount of raffles that you want. Mm -hmm. So again, it's more of the state kind of keeping a big brother eye on everybody. So just to take poker. Say we wanted to have a poker night and there were going to be eight of us in Hadley. Does that require something from you? If you're going to be giving out prizes. If there are prizes. Them. Yes. It's not just the winnings, though, All that prizes. you have. So the winnings at the oh. poker table would be a prize? Yes. Well, dang. Over to anything, anything over <laughs> 25. Well, that, that's it for having it here, but what if you're having it in your house? No, then, then you don't know about it. <laughs> but I should that have it, be, right? I, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I, I mean, there's ways to get around certain things where if you have, if you don't charge for the ticket. Oh, okay. And it's open to anybody, yep. then you don't have to do it. Then you don't then have to do it. Then it's equal opportunity for everybody. If you're collecting money for that ticket, then that's considered the raffle wheel. See, there you go again with that depth of knowledge. It seems like since a simple question, right? And then you start digging down. Well, there's this way to do it, and that way to do it. And that's where I'm impressed. That's all I have to say. This is our dog licensor. Oh, yes. Most people think all we do is sit in the office all day and issue dog licenses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's one thing um, I have not increased over the years. I know you've noted other departments have increased to keep up with other towns. Um, I just want to have the dogs licensed. Mm -hmm. uh, they're five and ten dollar fees. Um, I don't think you should have to pay more for Fluffy. What's the purpose of a dog license, Jessica? Public safety. And making sure if the dog bit anybody, I'd have their rabies on file. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. How many dogs do we have in Hadley? How many do we have or how many are licensed? How many are licensed? <laughs> <laughs> we average about 600 that are licensed. Mm. There is probably a bit more than that, I would assume. I would assume, too. <laughs> okay. And last, but very important to many of us who are tracing family histories, the genealogy. Oh, okay. Yes. So I walk into your office, or do I make an appointment? A genealogy, uh, the first thing I recommend is that you email me with as much information as you possibly can. Okay. Uh, going back a couple hundred years, everyone was named Mary and John. <laughs> they named their children Mary and John. Oh, they named thanks. their grandchildren Mary and John. Um, so it's really hard to decide which family goes with what. Um, our records go back to the 1600s. There was a period, I believe, 1843, where we unfortunately lost 50 years due to a church fire. Mm -hmm. So we have that lapse there, unfortunately. Which church? But the, it was just told me it was a church fire that okay. lost all of it. Okay. I don't know the details to that. Because we have four or five here in Hadley, and I just mm -hmm. wondered which denomination, mm -hmm. maybe. Well, we have five, or we have seven cemeteries in town, but five are run by the church. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, five are run by the town, two are two run, run by the church. Okay. So I house those records uh -huh. as well in the my cemetery office. records. The cemetery records as well. Rosalie knows that, don't so. you? It's and I thank Fred every time thank I open those books and those pictures. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thank God for Fred, yes. Okay, do you have any questions? We also have the uh, book. Go ahead, Jane. She didn't say the town meeting can't run without her. <laughs> yes, you cannot have town meeting without a town clerk. That's Actually, there's eight the minutes. It's a recording secretary. So, and the funny thing, it was not funny, it's just that if I'm clerk for 20 years. As long as I'm still clerk, I can go back 20 years and change any record within my custody. Well, dang. From that time, which is, <laughs> wow. You're a very important person. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, would you like to say anything about the um, kind of work that you do for the town of Hadley? Well, number one, whatever she wants me to do. <laughs> General dog But body. number two, point of interest, <laughs> In 2007, I'm a Hadley girl. I was born and brought up here. And your family and went is? went to school here. Your family? Bristol or Wetowitz. Bristol and, or Wetowitz, OK. Yeah. And I ran against her. Oh, Jessica. Because somebody suggested it to me, which was a <laughs> foolish thing, because I was taking care of an elderly mother. Mm -hmm. So I just waited a year, and then she hired me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very forgiving person. <laughs> Oh, come on, we're best buddies now, Pat. What are you talking well, about? Well, <laughs> I go way back with her family oh, yeah, for, for years. So yes. I'm, they call me auntie, and 
all Got of it. that. So, but I love working there. I love seeing the people. Nice. I do a lot of the dog licensing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of the census stuff. You get a lot of walk-ins, Pat, when you're there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're trying to do paperwork and keep records or whatever Jessica's asked you to do. Well, most of the time I can help them. Some of the time <laughs> I can't. But then Janice is across the hall. Oh, And yes. so she's a big help. She's mm -hmm. a wealth of knowledge for us, or for me. Um, but I, I just enjoy it. And I'll be 76, so let's see how much longer I can go. Hush, hush. <laughs> and I love doing the elections. The elections <laughs> are my thing. That's your I favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, she's my right hand with that. Yeah. She organizes Terrific. all the employees and the... Have you got somebody lined up behind her? She's threatening she's, she's you here. <laughs> oh, she's not leaving? No, even if I retire, I'll still stay on and do the elections. <laughs> Good old. Um, Nancy. I'm not a happy wrestler, but I have a question. Sure. I would think that you have to be very aware of what's going on in the state also and how it influences. Yes, the yes. All, my office is basically guided by Mass General Law and the bylaws of Hadley. So people ask, you know, well, how much power do you have? It's like it's the power of the law that I have to follow. So I keeping up with that, and I was explaining the other day how I, the first two years, all I did was read, read, and read, and stuff. And my biggest message I want to get across to everybody that's watching this or that you know is just to educate yourself on town government. Understand that these, you know, going to town meeting is huge. You know, it's the building block to everything your town level, local level, state level, federal level. Um, you know, so it's great to talk to your friends and neighbors about what they think, but always educate yourself mm -hmm. on the issues that are going on. How do you educate yourself on that? I mean, here are townspeople and you want them to go to town meeting and you want them to be so, educated. Mm -hmm. So what are their resources to, to uh, do that? Well, normally for town meeting, we always have the forums that the select board put on to discuss the articles that are going on there. You know, reading the paper, asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it just blows my mind sometimes where I get the warrant for town meeting and I have to read it like 50 times before town meeting to understand everything. I don't understand how someone can come to town meeting, look at it for 30 seconds and mm -hmm. understand the verbiage of it. Yes. Yep. So I'm just saying, you know, get the warrant in advance. It's not, don't just show up to when it might pertain to you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a couple of times we haven't had quorum. Um, the three times I think we tried to reduce quorum, it was voted down. So we have 100 people that is required. Okay. Um, but again, do you want those 100 people to decide a $22 million budget? So come, I mean, I'd love to get more people at town meeting. I'd love to get more people voting. I mean, it's scary that sometimes, you know, 25% turnout, I'm like, woohoo. Um, I mean, obviously the presidential ones, obviously we get a bigger turnout because sure. um, of all of that, but be more active, get involved. I can't thank the volunteers that come to the town enough everything they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More questions? As uh, I think I started with the tax people and with Carolyn, your town administrator, again, what you get, what kind of bang you get for your buck as taxpayers is thoroughly overwhelming to me. It just is an encyclopedia of knowledge sitting here to my left, which I don't un even understand a lot of. But I know it's necessary. So thank you, Jesse. You're very welcome. Anything else? Okay. I'm always available if anybody has any questions.